Interrupt your sound check there. That's no Can you show us a bit of this technical wizardry you've got in front of you? <laughs> yeah, well, this is uh, the main uh, mixing console for the house. This is controls what the people in the theatre actually hear. So you're in charge the of the sound? Yeah, absolutely. What's the difference between Erasure's concerts and other concerts? Because it's all drum machines and keyboards, yeah. uh, it's possible to get everything sounding really nice and fat mm. and as loud as you like. And so that's the good side of it. And the, the difficult side, from my point of view, is that Vince has decided on this tour to use um, old synthesizers. So there's a lot of mixing involved. Uh, uh, for example, I might be doing one song where the faders are like in this position to get the balance right. And then in the time it takes to finish one song and start the other while, Andy's just having a quick chat to the audience. I've got to completely reset all these. From what I've seen, it looks very complicated. And have you ever done anything that's gone drastically wrong? Um, the tour's only just started, yeah. <laughs> it? Well, actually, things almost drastically went very wrong last night because 15 minutes before the show was supposed to start, um, all the keyboards blew up. And oh, that's handy. Basically, there was a, a mad panic backstage trying to fix, a, fix those. The thing about this job is you hope it's all going to be it'll all be all right on the night, as they say, but mm. usually a few things go, around, go down and you have to be prepared to, for the unexpected. People everywhere, the sense of expectation hanging in the air. We've had a look at the sound desk. Uh, in case you decide to have a night off, can you tell the guys here how to uh, operate all the, the right. lighting effects? Okay. What we have here is we have the lighting desk here, and each one of these faders here actually brings up a different set of lights. And these faders actually represent what is written down here that I've written down here. So, for example, this is truss A, which I call here. It's the front truss, and you can access it here, or you can flash them with these buttons here. I'm down to know what a conga wash is. Can a I conga, conga wash, wash, everybody's favorite. Oh, yeah. It's a lovely oh. purple colour. Oh, that's nice. Bring it up here, you can actually see a bit more of it. Here, it's a very sort of ultraviolet looking yeah. colour. Makes everybody that's wearing white shine up very nicely. So it can memorise everything yeah. that you've programmed exactly. in there. So and you can make a one switch. You've just got. build yourself a look. Yeah. And when you found a look that you like, you actually bring up this one, touch this button, and it saves it for you. So this is the, the desk that yeah. operates the yeah. moving lights. Yeah. These are the colours. Yeah. You can put into the lights. So, how many colours have we got all together? There's 80 programmable colours. Would you be able to move them all at the same time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We select them all. Uh -huh. Now you can move them all at once. Are they, can you synchronise them all live? Yeah. So, so if we go back to the beginning, as yeah. it were, like that. Yeah. Okay, now you can move them all about together and they'll all move together. Do you know what colours they are in? Through, or? yeah, you do. You get to know from up to time of what, what is C17? <laughs> C17 is a pink. <laughs> this is fantastic. This is what we call the think tank. Uh -huh. This is Vince's tank. And basically, it's uh, got little rubber tracks and it drives across the stage. So it is a real truck. I mean, it actually does move. It oh, yeah, it's the effect. real thing. It's the yeah. real thing. And then inside, you've got all of uh, Clarky's keyboards. Right. Are they just sort of for decoration? Or is this no, they're all real. They all function during the show. There's, there's no tapes or anything like that. It's real live. Live, 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 live. 
Right. This is Andy Bell's balloon, which he travels to another planet in during the show. He gets in it, he goes up yeah. into the roof, he gets changed, and when he comes back down, he's a different person in a different yeah. place. Yeah. Do you know the burner? Yeah. Is it real? Because from the auditorium, it looks just like the real thing. Well, it's supposed to look like the real thing, but what it really is, is just red material with a light in it and a wind machine underneath it, and it blows it up, and it looks like it really flames. Looks, yeah. It looks real. Yeah, good. Yeah. At the beginning of the show, Andy arrives on this beautiful white swan. It comes gliding mysteriously through the mist and the smoke and ice. Lee, it's really, it's quite magical, isn't it? It's actually not magical at all. It's the art, the art of illusion. The swan glides through very thick, heavy smoke that stays low to the floor. And the swan is actually built on the chassis of a bicycle. I see, yeah. So and, allowing Andy to ride it onto the stage. It is a beautiful piece, though. It's fantastic. I could go shopping in this. Yeah, <laughs> I think you'd get quite a lot of shopping. Yeah, I bet you would. go. Dean, hi. Hello. We've been having a look at some of the technical side of the show, yeah. but this is where the glamour begins, isn't it? Yeah, I should think so. Your wardrobe master? What's your well, I'm title? a designer. I've designed all the costumes, and uh, now I'm on the tour. I'm actually just part of the wardrobe team. Right. So we do dressing and maintain. This is what the opening Yeah, this is what Andy wears at the start of the show, and someone had to stay up all night for a week to do that. Keely, would you fancy that job? Oh, no. 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 This is Mae West, isn't it, slumped in the chair here? Yeah, Vince Clark. <laughs> Vince Clark has got a new career. <laughs> this is all padded. <laughs> Who designed that, you? I designed it, yeah, and then got it made. It's got hip pads. <laughs> Everything's got a nice train. Do you think you'll fit in that, Keely? If I grow a bit. It'll bury you in there, wouldn't it? <laughs> What's your favourite costume in the whole show? I think my favourite is the rhinestone cowboy outfit that yeah. Andy wears. How long did it take to make that? Three yeah. months. Three months? It's worth £35,000 mm. as we speak. It's fantastic. I mean, the show looks sensational. A lot of it's down to the costume, so yeah, congratulations. Thank Thanks. I wasn't jealous before we met. How did you first become interested in music? Um, I think I was interested from when I was really young, from when I was, uh, when I was um, a baby, or, you know, <laughs> I, um, I used to sing in bed. My parents would say to me, shut up, go to sleep. <laughs> How did you first meet? Um, well, we met six years ago now, um, just for a musical, an advert in a music paper. I just advertised for a singer. No singer turned up, and Andy came in stage. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes before you appear on stage, what thoughts are going through your head? We're usually in fits of giggles because we don't know. We know we don't know what to do at all. We're crawling up the wall usually. <laughs> <laughs> How long did this show actually take to put together? Um, we began preparing in um, January, really. I mean, the ideas were coming before that, the year before. Probably, yeah. Uh, but the actual preparation work and working with the designers and everything that that was four months. Did you ever have singing lessons when you were younger? Yeah. Not when I was younger. I mean, I was in the choirs, and I could never. Um, I always ran out of breath before the end of the, li the last line of a verse. <laughs> Um, and I had about four lessons I went to when I first started with Vince, because I was getting a bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Vince, have you always liked playing the keyboard? Um, I used to, used to play the violin, but it was really atrocious when I was playing. <laughs> so um, I had to move on and play guitar and then the keyboard. So I, don't, I don't know, I just um, got an interest on it, in it, you know, when I was about 18, 19, actually, that yeah. late. And um, I just developed that interest. Yeah, could you give me any tips? <laughs> By the cheapest, cheapest one you can find, yeah. Yeah. Vince. Yeah, money doesn't buy, uh, yeah. doesn't buy the good sound. You have to get something really well, cheap. Well, some great stuff. sounds that we're looking forward to tonight. You've got a sound check to do now. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much for spending the time with us. Vincent Andy, thank, thank you very much indeed.